It's another Copilot's podcast. It's weird because it feels like it's been so long since we recorded. Yeah, but you will not notice because it will come out as normal. Because we are, at the minute, a month ahead of ourselves. Yeah, it's weird. Like, yeah, no, last time we were recording, we were. We must have been what? Like. It was. uh, Nearly two months ahead. Yeah, I think so. And then shit happened, and then some fucker drove into my car. (laughs) <laughs> and then I went on holiday, so yeah. Yeah, it's been been a little while. Oh wait, no. Yeah, I'm not even sure how long it's been since we last recorded. No, I can't remember. I could look at the files and see when they were last created, but I'm not gonna. That's a lot of effort to <coughs> go through. You can't tell me how to live my life. You're not my real dad. Old enough. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But. Many times over, but um, this, 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 this begins this is the the mark of the and I'll start again what this is is the first of many spooky episodes we're going to be doing yeah we're really easing into it with the with the children's shows the trouble is uh, using the word spooky I subscribe to uh, a podcast called Regular Features and Gav Gav Murphy who works for IGN his name for an unexpected erection is a spooky. So any time I hear the word spooky, <laughs> I can't help but laugh. Oh, well, we'll just avoid the word spooky. <laughs> like I was, I was gonna laugh at the comic effect anyway, <laughs> but I still found it really funny. Uh, anyway, horror shows well, for we'll kids. Just, we'll just call it entry level horror. <laughs> entry level spooky. <laughs> oh dear well I suppose it's all aimed at teenagers oh, <laughs> that's where disgusting. you get those entry level spookies <laughs> wait Goosebumps they weren't teenagers in Goosebumps surely no, that girl was about 12 or... no but I think overall this series is aimed at sort of younger teens mm. isn't it uh, which one do you want to start because we've got Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps two shows which are pretty much the same thing they're both like horror and yeah. furniture. There's no overarching story between the the group in Are Afraid of the Dark, is it? Did you watch this uh, or is, did you have no idea what this was? I, I'd seen like the odd episode here and there, but that was when I was like actually a child. Yeah, I'm just looking at this. It originally came... Well, it only says when it came out in America and Canada. So did we not get this over here then or did you have to have cable? We did, but it was on like... Um, Sky, so Nickelodeon uh, and stuff. We did not have Sky when I was a child. Yeah, that's probably yeah. So you probably got like the new shit Nickelodeon, not the old great Nickelodeon. I well, like when I went around friends who had Sky, I I got to watch cool cartoons. I was like, who are all these people? And they're like, have you not watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie before? Or Dexter's Lab. And I'm like, no, what's this? But yeah, yeah. I can't even remember what channel Goosebumps aired on. To be fair, uh, let me see if I can quickly find out. It says it says Fox Kids, but that wasn't uh, CBS Fox. Uh, oh no, that's the publisher. It, well, it just doesn't say. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna assume that it was on like some channel in the UK. It, it, I, 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 I remember watching it, so I wonder if it was on the BBC or ITV. Because I def, I have very, very vivid memories of watching it. Hang on, let me actually just ask Google. Uh, which channel did Goosebumps? You're listening to CBC, someone? CBBC. It was CBBC. Okay. Oh, that's just a bit of silence. Uh, oh, they could uh, they could only air after six pm. It was like the because of like the content. Water, water, watershed. <laughs> yeah, like the kids' watershed. <laughs> I didn't even know that that was a thing. But who's who's turning off at six o'clock? He's going right. Come on, kids, time for bed. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I just yeah, just change the channel. Uh, okay, which one do you want to? Just send me first? to a different TV <laughs> with a PlayStation, so I can play GTA. <laughs> <laughs> More combat. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, seeing as now we've established who aired it, shall we just dive into Goosebumps? Okay. What? Is your earliest memory of Goosebumps? Did you watch it when you were a kid? Uh, no, I didn't. 
I, I think I watched some of it. Are you serious? I was, you didn't watch it? Yeah, but I was more interested in reading the books. Now, obviously, I'd just rather watch the TV show. <laughs> I didn't know uh, that there were books. I just thought it was a, a show. But I have such vivid memories of sitting there, just like watching CBC and thinking, oh, great, yeah, Dennis and is on, this is great, and then something else came out, and there's like, right, now it's time for Goosebumps. And that fucking theme tune would play there. And it was. Uh, it's the dog. The I dog's think it really eyes. Does it in the show. <laughs> fucked me up for a long time. Like I was couldn't couldn't ever look at dogs properly again. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I found myself always since then romantically attracted to dogs. I was just. I was so scared of goosebumps. It was fucking terrifying. Even just the 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 little G, you know, the G with the spike through it that like. Is it's R.L. Stein, isn't it? His briefcase falls open and the pages fly, and then that shadow of the G with the spike through it. Just seeing that floating down the street utterly terrified me. Did it still scare you now? A little bit. If so, you're in for a real shit show later in the, <laughs> later in the series. Because <laughs> um, we're looking at scarier things. So, what, what we've established is that we know we are the Co Pilots podcast and we do try to watch the pilot episode of every TV show but basically what happened was access- accessibility got in the way of us uh, sticking to our um, you know devised plan for the format of this podcast and we just watched the first one that came up on Netflix which I mean is weird because the the other episodes I can't see them on Netflix no. like the ones that are listed as the first like perhaps Three. Perhaps there's a rights thing or something. Or, or so. Oh, okay, I was gonna say you. You never watched. Maybe it, they're just so. not good enough. Uh, oh no, the, there's some of them. That are pretty, the werewolf of Fever Swamp. That that was terrifying. Um, there was another one with a mummy in a cupboard or something. But so you're you're not really aware of like the the most famous, the well known episodes, like the ones with Slappy the doll, the dummy, and stuff. I think I might have seen them. I fully might have seen them, but like I just don't remember. Mm. Um, I the thing is, I I feel like I've, like, I know I've said I've got really strong memories of Goosebumps and stuff, but my main memory is just the theme tune coming on and then me going, no, nope, I'll watch something else, because I was too scared. Because <laughs> there was one, I, th- I think it was Goosebumps, but there was an episode that either opened or ended with a kid drowning, and you s- the camera was like that's pretty dark in the water from the kid's point of view, looking at another kid on the on the little jetty I'd, I'm pretty sure that's from Goosebumps so I've got real vivid memories of watching that and my cousin and just being fucking terrified Where is it? Goosebumps. I wonder what episode that might be uh, is it Camp Nightmare uh, the curse of Camp Cold Lake could be that yeah no it could be that sounds like um, the other show we did mm. Top of the Link <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably very different um, I mean, yeah, it'll be worse because it doesn't have, you know, the guy from uh, Mother Superior from Train Spotting. Everything's better if it's got someone from Train Spotting in it. That's true. Um, so uh, let's actually get on to the, the episode we watched. The one we watched is called The Girl Who Cried Monster. Yeah, first episode on Netflix, therefore it's our pilot. Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's uh, the books in the original Goosebumps series that were made to episodes of the Goosebumps television series were subsequently re-released in a series called Goosebumps Presents. Oh, so what, what's on Netflix comes from Goosebumps Presents, because the first episode of that is the Girl Cry Monster. So, so yeah. So uh, it's, well, uh, close enough. It's um. <laughs> we'll just change the episode title. <laughs> Well, you can, you can tell. Goosebumps from... presents. Are you afraid of the dark? <laughs> <laughs> hey, let, actually, let's do that. <laughs> um, so the girl who cried monster. So basically, you can tell from the title, it's a retelling of the boy who cried wolf. Um, basically, there's a, a little girl who keeps making up that she can see monsters uh, to scare her brother, which is something that my cousin also used to do, which fucking terrified. Like we went on holiday to shit. I can't remember. But there was a we were staying in this big old house like and in my like seven eight year old mind I was like there's fucking monsters in it and she would just make shit up like oh, I've just seen something running through the bush and I'm like oh great that's me not sleeping um <laughs> yeah so it's basically she keeps winding her brother up and her parents are like oh you really shouldn't do that because you know it winds your brother up blah, blah, blah. 
And then she finds that her real her librarian is a real monster. I know, Ooh. it's very it's, it's very like I didn't see that coming. Oh, no way. Well we'll, we'll get to that. Um so yeah, he turns into a sort of gribbly thing, no one believes her, da la la. Goes on like that. And does she she goes back at some point and takes his picture. And I can't remember he's not in the picture, is he? No, he's um vanished, much like a vampire would. Yes. Um I feel I'm, like for their for their makeup team it would have been a lot easier if they'd just gone ah, <laughs> Vampires are monsters too. <laughs> Imagine, oh my god, what what's the monster this week? Oh it's a, a giant Cthulhu like beast. Oh quick take a bit oh no sorry I didn't show up on the camera. Or in reflections or uh, to the human eye. Uh, so. Yeah, or to yeah to the camera crew who are there <laughs> filming. It's just yeah, it's just this little ball on a stick. <laughs> um, I didn't realise quite how bad the acting was in Goosebumps because g- looking back at it, I was like, "How the fuck was I scared of this?" But so actually, yeah, having, having said that, the the sort of the paedophilic sort of characteristics of the librarian when when she's discovered he's a monster and he knows that she knows the way that he sort of manipulates their conversations and he's just being really really softly spoken but threatening at the same time that was genuinely quite unsettling and I think that probably would scare people more than the actual monster um, yeah no that's because he's a you know bas- basically and I don't, I don't mean to uh, you know, speak ill of any actors or anything. If someone, if you said someone draw a paedophile, they would draw this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What job would a what job would a paedophile? Probably a librarian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, let's yeah, just leave that for a minute. Um, what? So yeah, I mean, the the kid. The, the little boy, I thought he was actually quite good. He was fairly convincing, but the parents were fucking shocking. But then I guess, like, if you're going sort of melodramatic, it's for kids, you know, the slightly heightened performances. I think, you know, kids respond to that. I suppose, yeah, because I imagine most of them only do, like, one episode and then they're just like, cool. That's it, yeah. I'm, I've done this. I wonder so if you could. If, 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 go on, sorry. Yeah, no, I was just thinking, for the most part, like, you might not get super... Because they're not going to be super well-developed characters, really. Well, you've only got, what, 20 minutes, if that? Yeah. So, yeah. You could probably film the whole thing in a day. Easy. Maybe. If you were, like, really good. You, maybe. But I reckon it would probably take a little while to... But, but with all the makeup and, you know... Well, so, although, did you notice, they, they're not afraid to use the same shot more than once for different scenes like you know when he reveals himself as the monster it's always the same shot yeah I did but there's something charming about that I think yeah well it's just good filmmaking I think it's economical filmmaking particularly when it's for kids and it's like eh I mean it's got a, obviously not to demean like any, any you know kids shows or anything but if you've got a budget you've got to find ways around things and I think actually that's that's probably a a legitimate way of getting around the problem of okay we've got all the makeup but it, it takes a lot of time to get it on him we've only got a limited amount of time to film this and every every minute is costing us huge amounts of money so I don't think there's a problem with that well yeah I mean and like it's it is for kids yeah and because to us a 20 minute show feels like nothing it's just like oh that's <laughs> 20 minutes but when I was a kid 20 minutes felt like hours mm, I'm really like uh, intrigued by the the relationship that we have with time now that we're older because it's like I'm sure that TV shows you know like you said 20 minutes last a lot longer equally I was convinced shit TV shows <laughs> last a long time <laughs> but equally I was convinced that or at least I wasn't convinced that the first two Lord of the Rings films were three hours because I remember sitting down and watching the whole thing when I was a kid. I know I'm, s- I'm still not convinced. But then it, you, they're not three was... hours; they're way shorter than that. Um, so when we get to the twist in the episode, the fact that actually the reason that her parents are in such denial about her seeing another monster is because another monster threatens them because they are in fact real monsters. 
Did you yeah. see that coming? I mean, I didn't, but I wasn't... Expecting a twist. No, and then even when the twist happened, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I thought, it was, do you know what, fair play, you, you completely done me there. I didn't see that coming. I actually quite enjoyed it. Like, oh, that's great. I really like it when stuff surprises me like that. Yeah, I mean, my thing, like, it, I don't think it added or took away anything from the show. It was just like a, oh, oh. <laughs> they're monsters too. But then when when the the other kid, her neighbour, like comes to the window, dressed as a monster for no reason, dressed as a monster. Well, like, hadn't she like? Well, I suppose yeah, dressed as a monster was a bit, <laughs> a bit odd. And then but... he, he's at the the window, and they repeat the line. Oh, he repeats the line of what librarian said. What's for dinner? And they say, Well, you are. And you're like, oh no, they're going to eat the kid as well. And then he says something like, going to love this pie. And then suddenly he's got a pie and they all start laughing. That was really weird. Yeah. I found it a bit weird when they're like, uh, yeah, no. When you're old enough, you're going to go get your fangs. And I was like, I, I don't understand how these <laughs> monsters work. <laughs> Do they not just have fangs? I guess. I don't... I, yeah, I'd, I'd, but get, like, you know. Wor- I mean, I worrying about the cryptobiology. They, like, <laughs> they didn't look natural, so. <laughs> um, no, I actually really liked this. I thought it was, yeah, no, it was I really charm. enjoyed it. It was a nice, nice way to spend twenty minutes. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a giggle, and um, I just like I wish I, I was brave enough to watch this when I was a kid because I know I, w- I would have been terrified and I wouldn't have slept for weeks after certain episodes of it. But I wish I could have just, you know. Yeah. The thing, I guess, because now that we're older, we're just sort of allowed to watch much, much darker things. That mm. now these st- these things kind of feel a bit like, oh. I mean, I could watch the rest of this, but. Or I could continue watching Bates Motel. <laughs> oh, have you been carrying on watching it? Yeah, no, I am. I am deep. I'm just going to tell you how far in I am. Uh, I'm nearly at the end of season three. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean it has been a while since we recorded, mm. but yeah, you, uh, I've been watching like the odd episodes like here and there, so like a couple of night or something. Yeah. Did you carry on with Twin Peaks? Oh, I did my fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Uh, series two of Atlanta's out, and I, I'm really trying to get through it, but I keep getting interrupted, and I'm still I've been on the same episode for about three weeks now. Um, yeah, but I need. To, well, I think once I finish Base Motel, I'm gonna go back and watch the rest of Atlanta oh it's so good the one I'm watching at the minute I was, I was uh, watching it earlier actually before we started recording and I was really laughing hard it was so funny um are you afraid of the dark uh not anymore oh I am <laughs> uh, but just just to check we did watch the same episode of <laughs> oh you're afraid oh yeah we, we mentioned before didn't we so yeah the the tale of the phantom cab so the um it's basically the same thing, isn't it? Oh, you're afraid yeah, of Yeah, except this one has... They sort of... They have like that whole, like, oh, when you sit around the campfire and you're telling friends all the scary stories. Yeah. Like, weirdly, when it was me and my friends, they were all about murder and things... Murdering stuff and then living under your bed. Yep. Oh, there's always that... <laughs> the one that sticks in my mind is, like... Oh, it was something like... It, it, the, basically the punchline is I say punchline like it's a joke uh, <laughs> some, something has come into your house and just murdered everything and has just been you used to have a dog and it was like it'd sleep under your bed and lit your hand when you were scared oh yeah it's weird because it's a story that everyone knows I'll tell you what I know that's cause but I don't know what like the root of it is it's weird well, I read a Stephen King short story and, it, and by short story I mean it's <laughs> maybe, literally a couple of maybe pages. that's it then <laughs> Um, but it's like uh, oh, I can't remember it but someone's on a bed and yeah something something licks their hand and they look down and the dog is like chewing on the bones of the remains of his wife or something uh, so maybe it's just a it. more sort of like tone I say toned back but there's still like dead dogs and shit yeah okay. but Eat body sure story because uh, it yeah no it's one of those weird things that, like most people who you say like oh I remember the scary story we used to tell as a kid and it was like and it's just that and they're like oh yeah no we used to do that too and it's like but oh uh, that's it um, under the weather that's what it called 
anyway, so yeah, this guy, his wife is asleep next to him in bed, and sorry, I completely misremember this. She's not feeling well. He goes and has a normal day. He um, comes back, and uh, so he sees his dog skulking from the bedroom where his wife is still asleep. The dog is licking her chops in the bedroom. He finds that her hand has been chewed on by the dog, leaving only a few strips of flesh. Uh, so yeah, the, so she's dead in the bed, and there's flies all around her, and um, the dog's eating her hand. That's it. But yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember many like scary stories from when I was a kid, but there was one that was I don't think I ever heard. But everyone at school was telling me you can't ever hear the story of Green Fingers. I don't really know what that is. But the other one was there's a doll and it's coming up the stairs and with every step it's saying your name. So it was saying like, Richard, I'm on the first step, I'm coming to get you. And it just keeps I remember going. that. <laughs> oh my God, that shut me up good. Oh no, I mean, I remember the story. I remember when that happened to me. <laughs> I can't remember what the end of the story is, but I'm sure it didn't end that way. Um, It just keeps going until it's like I'm... On your bedroom, I'm gonna get you. Oh, this um, like this is actually like a full-on like urban legend. The lick, like the licking hand thing. It's actually just called the licked hand. Oh. Uh, okay. But like it's, me- it's mentioned a few times in like pop culture and stuff as well. I think Supernatural has a bit about it as well. In one of their episodes. Oh really? Man, I really I don't want to watch that. <laughs> but. Like, it's one of those things. Oh, apparently it's, like, adapted from a story written in, like, 1920. Oh, yeah, it's like the they kill the dog and then it's written in, like, the mirror or in the shower or something that just humans can lick too. People that can lick That was the weird oh. thing. Yeah. Oh, God, I found a horrible picture that's just shown that says, like, a, a kid in bed. Oh, sorry, it's a girl in bed, and there's some creepy, human-y, ugh, monstery thing under the bed. Um, oh, that, uh, that's... Uh, that's weird. I, I, don't, I don't like that story. <laughs> there's a picture of some guy just licking someone else's eye for no reason. That's disgusting. Um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Are you so, afraid of the dark? <laughs> That's the kind of like yeah no it's that kind of thing of just like kids telling each other scary stories, which I I think is quite a nice way to frame a narrative to do to do something like essentially what Goosebumps is doing just doing like a monster of the week sort of thing but having it sort of narrated from like the kids' point of view. Mm. I like that, but while I was watching it, I was thinking, do you know what? I really hope they never develop anything else around the Midnight Society I really hope they literally just go to the campfire, they tell the story Like they set out the rules like, we meet at midnight we go there, if you want into the gang you have to tell a story, that's all I need I don't need any more development around them, Like because at the end of this one he gets accepted into the gang but I, I don't care I, I, think I really like it as a, fra- as a you know, framing narrative device yeah, I'm not 100% I think all that will probably happen is that the cast will get rotated through. I think that's about it for things that are going to happen for them. Which is good. And I think, I guess you might get, because they sort of take that first, like, I guess it's like opening like two or three minutes to sort of go, oh, it's your turn to tell a story now. Mm. So they might do like, I guess little bits and stuff in there, but probably not that much what did you think of the story uh I it was kind uh, of shit <laughs> yeah I mean there was a lot of like I quite like the lost in the wood things a pretty good setting for a scary story yeah I mean, that's how a lot of scary like oh we got lost in the woods isn't that just every like kids cartoon yeah. Or f- kids film. I mean, it's a Is big it? part of the middle bit of The Hobbit as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's. 
it, the tale of the phantom cab it's called and there's basically was it there's a cab driver who died and he turns up to give them a lift but he then gives them riddles for some fucking reason <laughs> well yeah no he's like a like a human golem mm. did you actually did you solve any because I know we said about the the riddle about the barrel earlier but did you solve the other one like how far can you walk into the woods um oh yeah no because yeah I've had the riddle before yeah same it's just like halfway but that Easy. that annoyed me. Is like the second one is what has no weight can be seen by the naked eye, and if I put it in a barrel, it will make the barrel lighter. So I said, light bulb or torch or something. Yeah, I just went. I was just like, it's a candle. These kids are fucking idiots. Why haven't they worked out it's a candle? Yeah, and then like, oh, it's a hole. Uh, oh, okay. What if it's dark? Ah, you've taken it to pieces. Yeah, I've ruined this <laughs> um, 20 plus year old show. <laughs> he took for not being able to solve the riddle in exchange for a generous tip. So he's telling them riddles because he didn't get tipped. That's kind of bullshit. Well, I think that's the reason that the cab shows up. Yeah, they never really explain no. why the cab driver is stuck as a phantom in that area. Mm. It, the, the episode should really just be the weird doctor who lives in the woods. Yeah. Because it's more about, like, Fink than uh, the uh, cab driver guy. Yeah. Oh, he comes back, apparently. He's a recurring character. Because there's a note saying this is his first appearance as Dr. Vink. So, that's cool. Uh, I liked this show a bit less than Goosebumps. I think. Yeah, I think... I guess the trouble is like the strength of these pilots all depends on the strength of the actual story that they're telling yeah and Girl Who Cried Monster is a much it's just a retelling of another story Mm. but with a slightly different ending yeah whereas like this is I guess maybe somewhat original in comparison to just sort of like we've changed wolves to monsters yeah and at the end everyone gets everyone's eaten. a monster but yeah but I think no I thought I thought it was enjoyable oh yeah it was good it was alright but um it's, a, it's another one that I'm probably not going to watch anymore no oh here you go um I've just looked at the seventh series, which came out in two thousand, and it, it does say the mid, it, the Midnight Society get more involved. So um, yeah, they they're looking for the original members from nineteen thirty seven. Oh, but nineteen thirty seven. Yeah, I guess w- the ones we're introduced to are not. Yeah, they're in, like ninety. They're yeah. class of like ninety nine five or two or something. I'm trying to work out because there's one of them that I recognised when I was watching the show. I recognised one of the uh, Midnight Club members. I'm trying to figure out where I fucking rec- oh she's in Peep Show and Joey. What? And legit. <laughs> what? And Fargo. <laughs> Wait, who's this? Uh, the girl who plays Kristen is Rachel Blanchard. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, it's her. She, yeah, she's the American girlfriend in in a peep show. show. Oh shit, what's her name? Uh, Nancy. Yeah. Oh Holy crap. crap. I did and she's in snakes on a plane. That I've not. seen. More importantly, <laughs> that's weird. It was just one of those things. It was really annoying me, and then I was like, wait, I could Google this. <laughs> I did. But I, I hadn't. Legit. I. It's not the episode we've seen. I think. Okay. Um, but no, I. Part of me would be kind of interested to just kind of skip to the very end of the show just to see how different it is, mm. or maybe just pick out some of the, like yeah. some of the interesting sounding stories and watch. But yeah, it'd be the same with Goosebumps, I think. Yeah, that's that's exactly how I feel about it. I think I, I've got a lot more, like, obviously because I used to, well not watch, but I I recognise Goosebumps. I probably got more of affinity to that um, than Are You Afraid of the Dark. 
Yeah, I think of the two, I probably watched Are You Afraid of the Dark more. Oh, really? But neither, like, watch neither of them, like, religiously. Yeah. Did you ever watch um, Jeopardy? No. Because I could never watch that, because that was too scary for me as well. Oh, oh Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. Oh, that Did you watch that? Cool. That was on CITV. Did you ever watch yeah, that? Yeah, no, I didn't watch that, no. Okay, I just looking for like um, but then yeah to be honest I've conditions. never really been in like super into horror so uh, yeah that's sort of my department so, yeah. yeah although like genuinely like super into Bates Motel like I'm really enjoying it there's a little part of me that's a bit like why hasn't anyone figured out that he's killing people yet <laughs> well they didn't figure out Ed Gein was killing people for a while he only killed two people though there's only two yeah, I mean, the rest of the stuff that he had in his Wait, house no. was grave robbing. Ah, uh, that was it. He killed a woman in the barn. Uh, yeah, he killed a woman in the hardware store and... That was it. No, another did, woman who'd gone missing. The barmaid? Was that it? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it was the barmaid and the hardware store owner. Yeah. Is that right? But yeah, I like, right. yeah, no, they had no idea. Like, it was mad. I've watched... There's a documentary about it on YouTube that I've watched a couple of times. This. Yes. Incred- and normally leads me into a spiral of just like, oh, another serial killer document. I don't mind if I do. I um, I can't listen to podcasts about serial killers when it's dark. It just fucks me up. It really creeps me out. Yeah, no, it's if I'm listening to them, am I on? I'm on my own. Like, there's no one else like yeah. at home, and I'm just like, yep, yeah, no, I'm just gonna go to sleep now. Just put on this podcast. To oh my god, I can't sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. It's why I like I put on TV shows rather than podcasts to go to sleep. Mm. Like TV shows, I've seen a lot. Um, Although at the moment I'm rewatching Gossip Girl because again, yeah. Well, no, this is only this is still it's like it's been a long process. It's because oh, okay. I wo- I don't get through it as quickly as I get through Gilmore Girls. Because <laughs> <laughs> Gilmore Girls, like oh yeah, no, I've just finished rewatching it because I literally did nothing else for like two weeks. I can't remember when I. Uh... When we finished Gilmore Girls, it was a little while ago now. Yeah, I mean, we lost our main segue. Oh. I think you finished it in, like, May. Maybe. Um, it might have been. But that was only two months ago, and it feels like it's been a lot longer. It's because it leaves a big hole in your life. Yeah, no, it genuinely does. I think I might actually carry on watching it at some point, because I, like I want to see the whole thing with Jess again. I liked yeah. that whole storyline when it was like either it was between Dean and Jess I was like this is quite good yeah it's just a really nice normal story <laughs> um, next week we're continuing the horror theme it, just in time for Halloween <laughs> yeah I it, it's not. actually have no idea what Hemlock Grove is uh, our Halloween special I am well looking forward to that one Hemlock Grove I've got a feeling it's got something to do with werewolves because I think I tried watching it previously Channel Zero I've got no idea so yeah Hemlock Grove and Channel Zero I don't know what either of these are going to be like but I'm looking forward to it uh, oh it's Eli Roth uh, Hemlock Grove eh. the, guy, the hostile guy yeah hit and miss I think generally it does look like it's about horror that would make sense with why we picked it within the uh, within the, the hey I've movie. googled a bunch of horror shows <laughs> oh there we go uh, based on the book by Brian McCreevy McGreevy, sorry uh, this Netflix revolves around the peculiar residents and killer creatures of Hemlock Grove a dilapidated former steel town in Pennsylvania which sounds like Transylvania <laughs> mm. uh, okay oh rumoured to be a werewolf cool sweet <laughs> I'm like this. What's the other one? Channel Zero. Channel Zero. What channel is that on? <laughs> channel Zero. American horror anthology TV show. Ah, oh, so it might be similar to like um, American Horror Story. Holy crap, this sounds incredible. Children's TV is usually wholesome entertainment that can be enjoyed by the whole family, but child psychologist Mike Painter thinks that thinks there's one show in particular Candle Cove that might not have been so innocent no one seems to remember the 1980s show except for Mike and he has ever growing suspicions that it might have played a role in a series of nightmarish events from his childhood fucking hell that sounds wicked 
I'm. I need to finish Bates Motel. Because it sounds like I'm going to be watching this. Oh my god, this looks incredible. Oh, uh, I I'm hope this so is good. excited. I really <laughs> hope this is good. So do I. I mean, it sounds good. And if it's anything like American Horror Story, you'll probably dig it. That reminds me, we need to add that to the list at some point. Because uh, I really need to watch it. Uh, I spent, actually, at least for myself, spent a whole day in the Wilton house that we lived in. Uh, we spent the whole day watching the first series of American Horror Story in the lounge. It was a I know, I had to climb game. over you to get outside. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> I, think I, I think in that time I saw like five minutes and was like, this looks interesting, but you're on like episode four already and I don't want, I don't want to start watching it, episode four. It, it is really good, to be fair. Um, but yeah, so we'll do that in a bit. What a yeah. marvellous podcast this has been. It has been. Good return to form, friend. Yes, and you, Jollywood. Now fuck off! <laughs>